Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah Riley, and I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan. Hey guys, how you doing? And today we have a special guest who is in studio with us today, and this is Lisa Hansen. Lisa, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation. I'm excited to talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're excited to have you. So um, before we get started, we're going to have Morgan pray for us, and then we'll get into Lisa's testimony. All right. Lord, we just thank you so much for this time, and uh, thank you, God, for Lisa's testimony and that you have given us each a testimony. And I pray, uh, just like Lisa does, that we'll be able to use that to bring many people to you and to, to help people as, uh, you know, power over predators is a thing to protect and to train people to, to be how to protect and how to be safe. And so we just pray, God, that this will just continue to grow and to save many people uh, spiritually, but also physically in this life, God, that uh, you would just protect uh, the children, as I know that's near and dear to my heart, and Mariah's as we are new, new parents. And uh, so I just pray, God, that you'll just give us wisdom in these in this dark age as, it, as this time, as the times get darker. Help us to be vigilant and help us to be aware and help us to be involved in our children's lives. And so I just pray that you bless this podcast and that you'll just uh, use it to speak to many people and that you'll just bless uh, Lisa's ministry and that you'll encourage her as well. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually kind of know you from other people. So Morgan he went to Pushridge mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. knew your dad and yeah. your brother, yep. who were both, mm-hmm. they were, were they both Bible they teachers? They were both Bible teachers yeah. Yeah. Okay. at a time together, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then my mother-in-law, Jill Riley, um, you guys have been friends, so yep. she's told me all about you. She's and I think, a dear one to me. <laughs> yes. I am just so blessed like with all the stories she's told me, but I've never personally met you until we went to the Hands of Hope Gala, and then now, and I've never really heard your testimony, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard a little bit that you were a pastor's daughter. Mm-hmm. Is that true? So, yeah. yeah, tell us about your life. And yeah, your so I was born here in Tucson, and it's funny. I always end up coming back if we if we move for mm-hmm. any season. We I always end up back here. So mm-hmm. I, I love I love it here. And um, I have three boys, and I have seven grandkids. Um, my husband and I celebrated our twenty fifth wedding anniversary mm-hmm. this year. So that's, awesome. um, that's a lot of the you know that's just the where I am today piece. But the, but prior to that, my story um, does start, you know, born in a family, first girl in four generations. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, my parents just were just so excited to have, you know, their first baby girl, right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but sexual abuse started really young, uh, unbeknownst to my folks. And it was through extended family members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, for for on behalf of my parents, and on behalf of any parent, every child processes trauma differently. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. it's really hard to, um, like, give like well people don't wear t-shirts to tell you what's wrong right and mm-hmm. and a lot of times we don't know how to communicate what's going on or what, how we feel and yeah. and um so I was a kid that was so obedient and such a perfectionist <laughs> that my parents would not have even realized that I was having issues or mm-hmm. that I had a problem or I had when I say mm-hmm. had a problem just I had an identity crisis going on and mm-hmm. wouldn't have been able to to, you know, say that out loud. I just knew that I had to be the best person that I could be so that nobody would ever be mad at me so that there would be no reason for anybody to be ashamed of me because I was already ashamed of myself. So what was Mm. going on on the inside did not reflect what was going on on the outside. So my parents were like, man, we're killing it as parents. Mm. You know, we're doing (laughs) such a great job. She's so good. And, and then, um, I, I always just say, uh, you know, in that time frame is when my dad did become a pastor and, you know, I've been a part of a lot of churches here in town. And and so I just kind of shocked the world when I looked, I just 
basically I say I flipped the world off and, and took off. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I was really, I was like 14 years old when I ran away for the first time. And that's, that's when my trafficking story started. Um, and it's really hard to, to talk about it because it, never fit the narrative of what well first of all Tucson said we'd never had any trafficking mm -hmm. issues so so mm -hmm. it wasn't even a, a an expression that people were used to using or hearing and um mm -hmm. so I was when when my parents found me um I was it, my case was closed as a runaway returned to parents so there mm -hmm. was no investigation as, into the house that I was in or the men that I was with or anything like that and for me this was just bad girl you know, got caught and had to go home. Hmm. And um, how long were you gone? I was only gone for three weeks that first time. Oh, yeah. And, um, but I was, but my behavior was so brash that it was yeah. just my parents were trying to figure out what in the world had happened to their kid that like not yeah. too long ago was doing just fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so they were just kind of in a whirlwind. And so um, I ended up living in a group home for a year um, just to like, see if my, it would help, whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and I, I would say that, that that time definitely probably saved my life, but at the same time, it didn't address anything. It didn't address what was going on inside of me, why I was acting the way that I was, why I was feeling the way that I was. I couldn't articulate anything. Mm -hmm. I just knew I didn't like myself. Yeah. And, um, and so, but because it was all behavior based, it was like, okay, I got this. I know how to perform. So I'll mm. do and say everything they want me to do so I can get out of here in a year. Yeah. And then I crashed even harder when I got home. And that was really when I, um, I ran away again. And then I was gone from, um, about my, my junior, senior year, I dropped out of school and ran away and ended up on the streets for, for quite a while in um, mm -hmm. Kansas City, Missouri, because I kind of reconnected with some people that I'd met in the group home. Mm -hmm. And um, and that through that experience, that was something else, because, again, you feel like you're in your survivor mode, so you don't feel like you're, you don't realize you're homeless, you don't realize mm -hmm. you're on the streets, you don't realize you're doing whatever it takes to get by, but that's because you're just doing it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but when I realized that I had to wake up was when I got pregnant with my first, my first child. And it was one of those things where being raised a little, a little family history, my dad, along with a few other individuals, um, founded Hands of Hope, which was mm -hmm. at the time a uh, mm -hmm. crisis pregnancy that turned into CareNet and that's turned into Hands of Hope now. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the things that I knew that I had was something valuable. So it was just like I had something to live for for the first time. Mm -hmm. And it was it was really it was not the best thing for me to go, okay, so this baby needs a dad. I, I should could probably go ahead and marry <laughs> this person mm -hmm. that I don't know. Yeah. And um and, and so that relationship was really, really hard. It was uh, mm. um, extremely abusive. And by the time I got pregnant with my second son, it was not safe anymore. And so mm. I just had to, or I was running again. And But this time I had a different outlook and um, I ended up running back home. So mm. my parents invited me back in and, um, but old Hmm. patterns and habits uh don't die very easily and so but I was so thankful that my my mom really saw that I turned into okay so now I'm going to be the best mom like I'm going to raise perfect kids hmm. I mean and so I went into this mode of like trying to be the best mom I could be and my mm -hmm. mom was just in her wisdom and lovingly said you know if you don't know how valuable you are it's not going to ever translate to your kids hmm. we love you we support you we we want to help you in this journey of raising your children, but first mm. you got to figure out who you are and how valuable you are. Yeah. And it was kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. because you know, I I didn't go into that mom mode, uh, believing that I had any value. Still, yeah. I just knew I had to take care of these, these babies. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting journey. And then it kind of got, I was able to start daydreaming about like, what would it be like to be with somebody who actually loved me, <laughs> you know, and really wanted to just take care of me. And I thought this is going to be interesting. And, um, but because God is so sweet, um, hmm. 
long it's a long story but it's the it's one of the best stories because I started working with um, the youth at my dad's church because my dad was pastoring a church up in Washington State that's where I moved back with my boys and um, and the youth pastor unbeknownst to me was kind of thinking about matching me up with his best friend Mm -hmm. and I didn't know this because I wasn't going to date I was going to be in love with Jesus and he was going to be my (laughs) husband so it was not I wasn't going to go there I said that before (laughs) (laughs) right Right? yep yeah Yeah. I know it's like and then there's this ring (laughs) that says otherwise but Mm -hmm. um but so we um we ended up meeting well the funny part about the story was he introduced he unbeknownst to me was talking to his friend saying, Hey, I have this person. She's divorced and has two kids, but I think you should meet her. (laughs) And so that was my, that was the big setup for who I was. And so my husband at the time, he was not my husband at the time, but he was like, no, I'm good. You know, he wasn't really, I think it was probably like major drama. I I don't know what it was, Mm -hmm. but, um, but then he happened to come visit. And so Dean didn't push it. That was his friend and the youth pastor at the time. He didn't push anything, but then uh, Mike came to visit the church and saw me and um, asked him if this is who he was talking about. And I never saw him that day, but um, he decided that he was going to talk to his mentor, pray like, okay, is this something I should do? And then Mm -hmm. I shared my testimony a few weeks later, again, not knowing any of this was going on, but my husband's mentor happened to be in church. And so he called my husband. He's like, this is the woman you need to pursue no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so we actually wrote each other letters for six months before we ever Mm -hmm. met, talked, saw saw each other Mm -hmm. in person. And that was so different and unique and amazing, Mm -hmm. hard, but like, so I'm like, I've never been so excited for a mailbox in my life. You know, we're just yeah. like, is it there? Is the letter like there today? Pal. Yeah, he was totally my pen pal. And then we we met and um, we both we both just knew that we wanted to get married. Um, but there was a lot of work to be done with his parents, my parents, what all mm-hmm. that looked like. And um, and then within a few, within six months, we were engaged. And then we got married six months later. So that's where the 25 years came from. But he... Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's so much to that story. It's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. If you guys need like yes. a Valentine's Day love story. Yes. <laughs> <That'd be awesome. laughs> but yeah. Um, so, yeah, so he's just been in this journey mm-hmm. with me. Um, he has gone through a ton of um, hard things with me recovering from trauma that had never been addressed. Mm-hmm. And um, our family has really had to learn a lot um, how to how to have boundaries when it's extended family that are part of the abuse story Mm -hmm. um it's so hard it's just really really one of those hard things Mm -hmm. and and you know if you screw things up with scripture where you use and misuse scripture it can really have a bad impact on everybody you Mm -hmm. know um because sometimes there's some blurry lines and and boundaries get stepped over because maybe somebody grabs a scripture that says well this is how we're gonna Mm -hmm. live when you know the person who needs to be protected from from that abuse Mm -hmm. is the one that's that you know actually the lord is saying this is the person we're going to protect in this scenario so Mm -hmm. um you're yes. saying when people are saying like, oh, we just got to love them or something. Right. You're like, well, there needs to be a boundary still. Like, yeah. Like we do love them, but we forgive them. it's because. like trust takes time to yeah. be earned, you know. Right. There's and love. Still and still with that, you want the protection. Yeah. yeah uh, well, and there's love. And then there's also a really pretty powerful pr- scripture that God shares his heart for those who abuse children. Yeah. And, <laughs> and where those people Basically say, end up if. Yeah. Uh, suicide. Themselves, yeah. 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 So, you know, it's, um, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of debate amongst people discussing that, but it's, it's Mm -hmm. important to really, uh, the heart for those who are innocent and vulnerable and have their innocence stolen. Um, God cares about that deeply. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it started my journey to, to sold no more and power over predators. And yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. here we are. That's awesome. So, when people are hearing your story, I think just people that I know, even in our own church, like I know that certain parts they can relate to with yeah. the abuse as a child right? Yeah. or things happening and no one knowing. Or I think what happens a lot of times is they feel like it's their fault, so yeah. they don't want to share it, you know, even if someone's doing it to them, yep. um, especially if it's a family member. And so the fear is I can't say it because 
why didn't I say it earlier? Or like they think mm. they did something like maybe it was how I was yeah. dressed or yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And so um, I would like you maybe to share a little bit of what you would say to those girls that we have, even our, our own youth group that we know of, mm-hmm. yeah. um, just how to be able to share that if it's, that's going on right now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I would love to speak to that because it's not just, obviously it's not just girls, it's boys. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. one in three yeah. girls and one in four boys are going to experience sexual abuse before their 18th birthday. Mm-hmm. Those are the proven, That's the, those are the reported numbers, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and then I always... I like to describe any kind of abuse um, upon a child or upon an individual causes um, an identity crisis and causes uh, our brains to naturally respond with toxic shame. Mm -hmm. So shame is a literal neurological experience that we all have. And they've actually found it that you can, they can see it in the brain of a child as young Mm -hmm. as 18 months old. So shame is very powerful. And there's a difference between shame being convicted that you know that you did something wrong Mm -hmm. versus toxic shame where you believe you are wrong. Mm -hmm. And so f- abuse immediately sends that shame, that toxic shame reaction to the brain. Mm-hmm. So for anybody who is like, you know, wondering, like, why did I think that I did something to deserve this? It's because mm-hmm. that's exactly how your brain processes that experience. Because mm-hmm. it's too terrible to imagine that somebody that is supposed to care for you would do that to you. Yeah. Yeah. So by default, in just your mind's eye, it's got to be, I must have done something to yeah. deserve this, and right? most of the time you said it's like family members or people yeah. close to yeah. the family. Yep. Yep. And because I think they're more unsuspecting. Like Correct. They're like, oh, they're not going to do anything. So yeah. Do you know, like, is there a percentage of that you know of? 93% of the time kids are abused by somebody they know. Yeah. Yeah. And typically it's, it's, it's higher. It's a higher percentage rate with family and extended family. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So it's a huge percentage and I'm not like, I I don't want people to start looking around and going, you know, (laughs) within the family structure. um, Because I think that, you know, most of us as parents would never, we don't want to see that happen to our kids, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And again, like when it comes to even my parents, you know, they were doing their best to protect me. They didn't Mm -hmm. know because I wasn't saying anything. Mm -hmm. So again, back to anybody who is is experiencing that, um, Mm that that shame that's not your shame to carry mm. and yeah. predators are so effective at at making you believe that you did something to yeah, deserve this yeah, very sure. manipulative and so that's a that's also like if you do notice that you feel like i must have done something or there's something wrong with me or i'm afraid to tell because i won't be believed that's just mm. the enemy and the predator's way of yeah. keeping you held captive in that and so it's a great to me i always look at that going okay so it's so good that you have that awareness because yeah. that awareness now there's an action that you can take yeah. to it to step out out of that because yeah. it's a predator's tool to keep you stuck in that shame. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and you're going to continue to, if you, like that's what my, my mom said, what she said, if you don't know how valuable you are, mm-hmm. it's not going to translate to your kids because yeah. what you believe about yourself comes out in your parenting, in your, you know, and, and of course, if you're trying to be the best mom, then the implication is your kids need to be the best kids. Mm-hmm. So how does a child oh, maintain yeah. that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah, my another, parents, oh, sorry, well, your parents too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my brother and sister. But, uh, yeah, our parents would tell us, they would say that if anyone did something to us and we were ashamed to tell or if they threatened to mm-hmm. say, like, I'm going to kill Can you if you tell or something. Or, yep. Still tell us mm-hmm. and yep. don't, like, they're not going to, we'll take care of mm-hmm. you. Right. You know, we'll... So that, I think, helped us. By the grace of God, nothing happened. Mm-hmm. But that, I believe that that would have helped, even though it's still hard to talk about right. those things, yep. mm-hmm. that that invitation and knowing that they care yes. and that, like, even if you get threats, like, still come to us, like, yeah. we'll protect you. Yeah. That and helps. And so. I think it's learning from, like, history. My mom um, had family members who, not to her, but to other people had done stuff. Mm-hmm. There was mm-hmm. this other girl who talked to her. My mom, being the pastor's wife, had a lot of people share their stories. And this one right. lady's like, it was my, like, a family member. Um, it, we went to a sleepover at their house. He had done something to me, and I ran home, and I was so scared to tell my dad because 
she said if he told her dad that her dad would kill that person mm-hmm. and then if he killed him then her dad would go to jail and she was like a five-year-old right and so she kept this until she was like in her 60s she had told no one yep and so there's that fear that kids have that that because that person told that like if you say anything like i'll kill yeah. your family right. or i'll hurt you and right and same thing if they, they have a, a parent who's maybe aggressive or something and knows that they would want to retaliate or whatever mm-hmm. um but mm-hmm. another thing my parents mm-hmm. from that they learned is like okay no sleepovers so growing yep. up we just never yeah. had sleepovers yeah and yeah. that was a big thing or um family members we didn't like us girls like for me i never sat on their laps or anything yep. i was just very my parents were very mm-hmm. careful never being alone in a room with the opposite sex so right. that too um even with those like younger cousins or stuff we were just like they were they told us the stories at a young age mm-hmm. so we knew like okay this like we have to be careful because you don't want it like ev- like kids always be paranoid, be paranoid but right <laughs> but to be aware of our surroundings and just being yeah. cautious uh and so that i think I think really did help us growing up, but mm. still through that, I mean, for me with my story, it was when I was older, but someone had like inappropriately touched me who I thought was like, Oh, it was my brother. And we were in a setting with a lot of people around yeah. us. So stuff can even happen yep. if you're not alone, even if you do everything quote unquote, right. Right. Mm. And I held that for six months until I was so mean to that guy that <laughs> everyone was like, why are you being so mean? And then I shared that. And then mm. it came out later that he had like, I was going to the bathroom and he put a camera and had filmed me mm. changing. And I was, and that's where he had that lust. And so anyway, all that story come like to show it's like, I felt that I did 18 years old it coming out and Mm -hmm. i like wanted to only wear like baggy clothes and i saw how even girls can end up being like lesbians Mm -hmm. because it's like you're scared of men you're mad because they hurt you and you don't want them to look at you a certain way right because you had so Mm -hmm. the thing my dad shared with me he's like maya you're not a victim you're victorious in christ yes what happened to you was like you were technically the victim in the situation right but god can free you from this you don't have to live in this shame and so but i know we talked a lot but what else would you say with like the young boys or girls out there who you know just how to maybe even for parents like maybe asking their kids questions or what to do maybe to prevent those situations i guess so i love i love how your parents set you guys up to succeed in those Mm -hmm. situations and so for Mm -hmm. parents who feel like you know, how, how do you do that? Where do you get started? Or, or even just kind of the, like, if it's kind of like the fear of the unknown, there's lots of times where it's like, well, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to put any thoughts in their Mm -hmm. head. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, the reality is the statistics show that the average age, the kids that are abused the most are kids that are zero to five. Mm. So zero to five tells you that they don't know how to protect themselves. They don't have a voice to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate form of vulnerability, right? They're so dependent. And so predators, you take advantage of that scenario. And plus they think that people won't remember or nobody's going to believe them if they Mm. say anything. Um, And so, um, what I've learned that has been so helpful is um, the most powerful tool that helps center a person's brain when it comes to that fear that's prohibiting them from saying anything Mm -hmm. is writing. Mm -hmm. So if you teach your kids like they could draw a picture for you or they could try to write out the words as best as they can, um, that form of, it it really takes the emotion out and helps logic start taking over. Mm -hmm. And so even just like teaching kids how to to write things down or to, to draw pictures or to be able to communicate with pen to paper Mm. is a really, really powerful tool. I will never forget Mm. (laughs) the example of that with my son. Um, He was, I want to say, second grade. And um, he did after school care one day a week because of my job. And I came in, I picked him up. And I could see in his face like this total, like, he was not happy. Mm. And he gets in the car and and I said, what? Did something happen? And he just couldn't say it. And I have been there when when you freeze in that position because speaking is very, very difficult to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, I said, 
you don't need to tell me, but if you if you feel like it, you can write it down. And and when you if you want me to read it, you know, I'll read it when you're ready for me to read it. And like he grabbed a piece of paper <laughs> and he wrote it down really fast. And all it all it said <laughs> was she kissed me three exclamation points and a frowny face. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, on the inside, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is yes. so cute. And I don't, you know, it's like, but I'm, you know, so then we and then <laughs> then he wanted to talk about it. You know, this this little girl cornered him in one of those little tubes, you know, that you play, and then she smooched him and he. He was like, uh, I'm not ready for that, yeah. you know, and he was so upset about it. And, you know, and I validated him, but just the power, like there's something about them going, okay, I don't have to say it, but I can write it. You mm. know, yeah. it's okay. very, very powerful. It's a great tool, but I also want to encourage parents too, because the example that you gave of, of, of how much equipping they gave you is what the same thing you would do for your kid when they're getting ready to drive a car. Yeah. You yeah. don't throw the keys at them, say, get in don't crash, don't screw it up. If you do, your life's over, right? Or you're going to be mm -hmm. in trouble. Because it's like, and I feel like that's kind of what we do, not on purpose, but yeah. because this is one of those, it's not as tangible as throwing a set of keys and teaching somebody how to yeah. drive and where the brakes are and how to turn the car off and how to park and how to, all that stuff. But we do that because we want our kids to be safe as possible in yeah. a car on the road. Mm -hmm. Does it prevent all accidents from happening? No. No. And so now what do you do is when the accident happens, like in your situation where you had all of those skills, and I believe because you had all of those skills, you were able to handle what happened in that scenario yeah. a lot better than mm -hmm. most people who've never been prepared yeah. or even had the opportunity to feel like they can communicate it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so just teaching our kids what healthy boundaries are, what healthy relationships are. Again, setting the boundaries. It's so, I love being the bad guy. Mm. I love being the, no, my mom said I have to come home. I can't do this. Or no, yeah. I can't have a phone because of, and now yeah. all my kids are grown and so gone. another thing my parents say, yeah, like, 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 they we, make us the bad guys. Make us the bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah. And, um, and so it's just, it's just so helpful. And then again, because the goal of the parent is to be the person that your kids come to, yeah. right? You want to be that safe person, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and I always like to share, cause this changed and it, it still helps me every time I talk to kids is, you know, every human being born into this world comes with three questions that they're asking, even though they may not be able to verbally ask them, but it's, do you love me? Hmm. Do I matter to you? And will you be there when I call? Like mm -hmm. when I need you, will you be there? Mm -hmm. So it's, so like when you think those three questions is it's like if I'm talking to a child, even if I don't know them, mm -hmm. I know that they still have those three questions. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if their parents have answered those questions. I don't know who's answering those questions. Yeah. But if their parents haven't answered the questions, I can guarantee you there's plenty of people that are going to swoop right in and mm -hmm. say yes to those three questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so whoever is saying yes to those three questions mm -hmm they're the ones that are winning in that child's life. Mm -hmm. And if they have nefarious means, yeah. then like you say, like every kid, the reason we go onto social media is for what? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Just Am attention. I loved? Yeah. Do you see me? Will you yeah. be there when I need you? Like there's, that's why, because it's this identity crisis that I believe that our kids yeah. are in. So I was, was going to ask you about social media hmm. because yeah. I remember I had Instagram for like a year, mm -hmm. but then I was like, uh, like why why do i have this it right. takes so much time yeah. and there's so much temptation for right. me yeah but this was before i was married and so i was like i just have to get rid of it but i'm thankful that i don't have it now and that my wife doesn't have it and so for us we're like well a big preventative because you talk about prevention yep. rather than just reacting to a problem a big preventative is just not having that but i know that's not everyone does that and not right. everyone maybe can if they use it for something else but what would you say about social media and how to be careful or would you just say not to have it at all or yeah what, what would you say about that well in a perfect world we wouldn't have it right but yeah. um but so again I want to go I want to go back to one more like another thing that I like to think about all the time mm -hmm. is that your brain cannot believe something is real 
until it's experienced it. Mm. Mm. So what that means is like knowing and believing is different and we can have conversations about knowing or believing in God. Right. And so, mm. so mm. like I know gravity's real cause that's mm. what I've learned, you know, I, yeah. I see it, but, but I believe gravity's real when I fall down and hit yeah. the ground. I'm like, okay, I just experienced yeah. gravity. Right. Yeah. So the beautiful thing that, gave you the tool to not put Instagram into your world or to realize as it is you've experienced real relationships. You've mm. experienced unconditional love. You've experienced face to face. You've mm. experienced uh, protection. You've experienced something that you want to find in, an, in other people. Yeah. And you realized that Instagram was a complete fake. Mm -hmm. Right. And so most people don't but if, if social media is their first experience in relationships, it's really, really yeah. hard to help people see the difference. Yeah. And so, hmm. and so if we're experiencing, it, it comes even along with pornography, you know, where kids are experiencing pornography at such a young age now, mm -hmm. because yeah. they'll see something that mm -hmm. comes up on a device, mm -hmm. that's their first sexual experience. So now mm -hmm. as parents, we need to intervene yep. and, and help them experience something completely mm -hmm. different, you know, cause our brains are amazing and we can get back on track. But if mm -hmm. we're not aware what our child has experienced. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now if you think about all the kids that we just talked about that, that are going to experience sexual abuse, that's their experience. Yeah. That's where their identity's in there. It's in that shame. It's in all of this. And like you, you wish you didn't have to talk to your kids about this at right. such a young age right. because you're like, I just want them to be innocent. I right. know they're still sinners, but you know, yeah. you don't want them to know about all this stuff. But now things are it's coming everywhere. across screens yeah. like right. at a very young age. Yeah. So you almost have to talk about these things way sooner. And, it's not like it's not ideal. It's not what we right. want to do, but you want to tell them before the world tells them yep. the wrong version of right. sex or whatever it is. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. I mean, back in the day, there was no phones for me, but man, there was yeah. plenty of magazines and they mm -hmm. always ended up being in places where kids, you yeah. know, wherever yeah. you, you could just walk home and find one, yeah. you know? So it's, a, and again, the goal of the parent is to be the one that the kids feel like they can come to and share. Yeah. And so when you're, when you're teaching them, I'm the safe person, you know? So if you ever see something that, that you kind of would be embarrassed to see with me sitting next to you, just don't worry about being embarrassed yeah. about that. You know, um, yeah. we can talk about that. We Just can, asking, yeah. yeah, because if you turn those things that there are their vulnerabilities into their power, it's so yeah. empowering. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you teach a child, we won't talk about it right now. We can do it later if we have permission. But if you teach mm -hmm. a child the anatomically correct body parts yeah. mm -hmm. for who they're, they have more power in the room than anybody does. Yeah. When they yeah. know those words and they use those words, mm -hmm. it is the whole room goes quiet mm. Mm. and it's because it's truth. And yeah. it's like, I don't know why we get so squeamish about yeah. teaching kids that this is their knee, but we yeah. have to make up a different word for yeah. the sexually <laughs> private parts of their body, yeah. Yeah. which by default automatically causes a child to feel shame. shame. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, mm -hmm. We can't have a f we can't have fear about teaching that to our kids because mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with those words. Our culture has made something wrong with yeah. the words. Mm -hmm. They perverted and it. Yeah, uh, yeah it's yeah. totally exactly. It's mm -hmm. been perverted. That's a yeah. great word. And so, um, man, when you, we give our kids that power, they they loved. They're, Do you know what I saw today? <laughs> and you're like, tell me what you saw today. You know, and then you just give them that. Yeah. You know that firepower, and That's then cool. you guys are on the same team. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love that because. <clears throat> That's something why I felt like I was able to tell my dad everything yep. because my dad was so honest about his story and his past and the things he went through and very mm -hmm. like almost to what the world would say like, oh, we shared too much and you don't need to know that. The funny thing is if anyone at Push Ridge or stuff would think that we're the kids that didn't understand the sexual jokes and stuff. Yeah, we didn't go along with it and I didn't really know, but my dad had told me all the stories, but not in a perverted way. So right. I didn't take them in a perverted way yeah. and laugh like, ha ha ha, because I'm like, no, this is, these are real things. These are right. real people. These are real, you know, mm -hmm. body parts, but uh, yeah, the world loves to pervert it. But I think that another thing with my dad, which I would want to also implement, I think the issue, especially in the church is it's just, there's so much religiosity where it's like, you want to look at on the outside, right. but inside people are rotting and hurting. And, um, a lot of people are, have a lot of secret sins. And we noticed that growing up, um, just around people we are around and our friends. But 
Um, and that's why my dad, I love that at a very young age, he told us, he's like, Hey, you, your mom and I, sometimes when we have issues in our marriage, you know, it's because we did have, you know, sex out of marriage and Mm -hmm. then it almost felt like we had to get married and, you know, the Lord's redeemed that, but you know, it is painful and Mm we tried to wait, but we were alone together and this happened. And, and so it was just that honesty, like I know so many kids that they know from like their their parents anniversary their 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 siblings birthday that their parents had you know you know had sex out of marriage but they never talk about it right and so like even that with our parents just being so honest about Mm -hmm. that and like humbling themselves or anytime my parents would say something or do something they'd apologize it just helped it to where it's like if you go to them it's not like they're going to be like oh gross you did what or you thought about this right or you had this feeling in your body like another big topic that i bring up for women because i shared it in a podcast once and every like so many women then shared their story was like women struggling with Mm -hmm. like masturbation and those feelings. Mm -hmm. No one will talk about that, that that's like a feeling that you can get with certain things that happen to you, just normal everyday life, like that feeling and that um, just being able to share that with your family member, like a parent and so that you don't just continue in it and just feel that shame. Yeah. But so even that just helped me like being able to even talk to my parents about mm. that, yep. which I don't yeah. think a lot of kids have. So well, I think I, social media has made it harder for yeah. people to communicate. Well, they just like, Google it. So, no kids right. and everyone yeah. Google these and things. The that's wrong. what they do. Yeah. 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 You get yeah. the worldly. And I think that's why uh, you won't have to go into this, but I think that's why there is so much identity yeah. crisis is yep. like, and w- even with gender and all of that, yeah. mm-hmm. I think a lot of that stems from right. the abuse and different things and not being able to communicate. And yeah, so, sure. right. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, it's really important because those three questions mm-hmm. that I remind myself that every person's asking mm-hmm. is also the same three questions that any church should be yeah. looking at every person that comes into because mm-hmm. we come in, wanting to know, am I loved? Do I matter? And will you Mm. be there? And it's like, if we don't address the issues that everybody's going through, then no, I don't see you. I don't love you and I'm not there for you. Mm -hmm. And so, but I expect you to be a virgin when you get married, Mm. Exactly. even though I wasn't, and we're Mm -hmm. not going to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. The expectation is that you will be be, right. And, and so, um, and again, think about the reason why the gender crisis Again, to me, it's just an identity crisis, yeah. not just it's an identity mm-hmm. crisis. Mm-hmm. But but um, but can I can see exactly why it's working so well. Mm-hmm. And it's again, because every time they ask that question to the other part of the world or the other side of it is, yeah, I totally mm-hmm. see you. And yes, you are. Ex- yes, you should be whatever you want to be. And yes, I love you. And yes, I'm going to be there for you. Mm. So if a, if a person's struggling with their identity in their sexuality or what have you, and they share it with us, a, a person who rejects that, they mm. literally just completely dissolve that relationship to where that person is no longer a safe person to come to. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. and it doesn't mean that we uh, accept the the part of it that you know that that would be considered biblically wrong mm-hmm. yeah. right it's that we listen and we as we want to hear we want to know why we want to what's we want to know what's going on and mm-hmm. we want them to know that we love you you matter to us and mm-hmm. i'm here for you no matter what yeah. mm-hmm. when you say those things it doesn't mean i'm going to permit you i'm going to give you my blessing to go yeah. out and sin but it means i'm not going anywhere i'm yeah. not leaving the room yeah. and that's what you got right when yeah. when your parents shared those vulnerable things but it mm-hmm. it, it gave you guys so many tools mm-hmm. right and the freedom to come to them yeah. with that cuz you knew that they weren't going to reject you yeah. Yeah. so exactly yeah. yeah and it reminds me of the woman caught in the act of adultery where it's mm-hmm. like he he didn't say like oh everything's okay you can keep going and doing whatever you're doing he said go and sin no more like right. you're forgiven right but it's also it shows us that a lot of times it's like the man was supposed to be there like they'll throw the woman but that's why i also think the issue of with abortion and everything is mm-hmm. there are women who are continually being violated and could possibly get even if they talk about those situations of incest or like what about rape but it's like you just having an abortion is hiding the person who you know what's actually happening so what would you say to that if um because i know this might be out before 
uh, I mean, we've already voted, but for people <laughs> who are voting and yeah. stuff, it's like Prop 139, you know, right. with that, because I know mm. your family is really heavily involved with Hands of Hope and your mm-hmm. dad's yeah, starting yeah, the crisis pregnancy. Vote now. <laughs> nice. But Hands it's up. like, where is that in the mix of all of that? Like, do you see that a lot or, yeah, with, I guess. Um, sure. What I see is um, what I what I see ultimately when it comes to this identity crisis mm-hmm. is that the reason that we have the issues that we do with abuse and exploitation, the reason that we have the issues that we do with gender confusion, the reason that we have the issues that we do with abortion mm-hmm. is because, honestly, I think we've lost the conviction that every human life has yeah. immeasurable worth, yeah. that every human is priceless because mm-hmm. we've been created yeah. in the image of God, yeah. mm-hmm. and he cares about each and every one of us. None of us can really create life, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. He's the creator. Can't create life. And yeah. so, I mean, we think we can by, like, timing when we're going to get yeah. pregnant or, you know, how <laughs> yeah. we're going to operate out through mm-hmm. all of that. And, you know, that's that's God. And, yeah. and so um, we've lost, we've lost that. And we've, mm-hmm. there's so many things that are distractions, right? We're mm-hmm. just the distraction of, of um, first off, it was, it's not a life. We'll mm-hmm. just call it a, a blob of cells. When they knew yeah. all along it was life. Yeah. Yeah. And now they can't, you know, now they don't even make the argument. They're like, yes, of course it's a life. Now we just don't care. Yeah. yeah. Because exactly. it's it's not a life that matters. Mm-hmm. It's not a life that's valid or whatever, whatever yeah. they want to. So we're really seeing now the true colors coming out of mm-hmm. we don't really care about human life. Yeah. Yeah. We don't really care about people. Mm-hmm. We care about personal selfish rights, whatever that mm-hmm. would look like. And, and the women and the babies have been the ones who have suffered the yeah. most from that. Sure. And, um, and, and again... I always love to to just, it's so simple that it, people kind of look at me cross-eyed and going, that's too easy. But, but the, the best prevention for um, abuse, the best prevention for kids to have sex outside of, before marriage, the best prevention for um, abortion or unplanned pregnancies are safe, healthy relationships. Yeah. Yeah. This goes back to my, you don't, Believe something is real until you've experienced it. Mm. So if as parents we are experiencing and we're setting examples for healthy relationships, we're Mm -hmm. setting examples for showing what God's redeeming love can Mm. do when we do have sin in our life and we aren't ashamed anymore to talk about it, Mm -hmm. then it gives us the opportunity to determine when a fake is showing up. And it's Mm. like you, like Instagram was that fake for you, Mm. right? Like, huh, that showed up in your life and, and it took you not very long, but you realized, I just don't, this is not something that yeah. I want in my mm-hmm. life. So, mm-hmm. so like by default, your parents were already practicing prevention mm-hmm. by setting yeah. that example of healthy relationships. Yeah, that's what my dad would say with the girls. He would try to show them love like yeah. in a fatherly way, right. in a good way, a healthy right. way. So that they didn't have to just try to find it in another man. Or right. show that or you didn't predator, need to just you know? find that in a man who like says that they're perfect. Because my dad's story wasn't. Yeah. Right. So I wasn't trying to find a man who's like, I'm a virgin and I've never been with anyone. And that's what I want too. It was mm-hmm. like finding even that's why I love Ryan's testimony. It's like someone who is broken, who has a story, but is humble, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. and that's where it's like that. And there's a time the to show. get married and to transition yeah. into that. Right. But to not, I guess, transition is a weird word now, <laughs> but to move into that, oh, but you want to move into that from a, a healthy place right. where mm-hmm. you know that you are loved. And even like even if your family passed away or something in a horrible accident, like you still know your identity in Christ. You still yeah. know that you're loved and that God's always going to be there for you. So yeah. right. it's like, yeah, we need the human relations too. Yep. But it's it's also beyond that, like we need to know our identity yeah. in Christ as yeah. well. So, yeah, because yeah. I mean, I was, I'm kind of the perfect example because, you know, I'm 17, 18 years old and I have this unplanned pregnancy, but mm-hmm. I knew, I knew, like, I, I mean, to go from what I what had happened to me, all of the horrible things that I'd experienced, I knew how valuable that yeah. life was that I had. Yeah. So, you know, even even when it was presented to me, well, why don't you just go have an abortion? You know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. it was like, back off. That yeah. was almost yeah. like, you know, for me. Did you get that a lot? Or like... You know, no. Because predators also, they oh, say, well, yeah. they mm-hmm. tell you, like, Get rid of it. because right. they don't want evidence right. of what mm-hmm. they've done, exactly. basically. Yep. So, exactly. yeah, how 
I don't know how much you want to share, but like, where did you get pressure from? I got, I actually got pressure from my, my, um, the baby's father's Mm -hmm. parents. Yeah. We were all so young and they were just like, this is just going to ruin your life. This Mm -hmm. is going to, you know, just, you know, just take care of the problem Mm -hmm. and, and it'll Mm -hmm. be over, you know? And, um, and it wasn't, it was just no, not even, I wasn't even going to consider it as an option and Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, and then uh, he's, he's an amazing person, you know, and, yeah. and he has an amazing wife and amazing kids and, mm-hmm. and all of my boys, you know, are just, just such a gift. And, mm-hmm. um, it's hard to imagine like n- them not being there. Oh like, yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Wow. And then my heart just absolutely breaks for my sweet friends that I have and every woman that has been put in that position for somebody to even mm-hmm. give them that option makes me mad mm-hmm. that they would not consider how painful of a process it's going to be for that woman, yeah. no matter what, no matter whether or not she mm-hmm. thinks she wants to be there. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that somebody put her in that place to say, here's an option for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that, that to me is what the really is the core mm-hmm. is it's like who gave anybody permission mm-hmm. to play God like that. Yeah. And then to put somebody who's in a vulnerable spot Mm-hmm. in that position to think that this is her only way out. Yeah. And then for um, the man, usually to just leave and to just right. run away. So she still yep. has all those feelings and yeah. no one's supporting her. Right. Even mm-hmm. still. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, it, it definitely, it, it can definitely go both ways. Um, yeah. My husband has a story. He, he got his girlfriend pregnant in high school and um, he, but he was ready to commit and, and she went and had an abortion and Mm -hmm. he, you know, it was devastating to him because he did understand the value of that life. He obviously wasn't planning on any of that, but you know, it was that it was a complete opposite, you know, scenario of just like, Mm -hmm. he had no, no help. He, he had no way to help her or that child because yeah. that it was all rejected. Yeah. So, um, it's a different, you know, there's, it affects everybody no matter what. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, and I just think that for me, it's mm. the reason, I mean, if you look at just like, okay, so where did this all come from? Well, it's the, it's the heart behind what the enemy's after, right? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. his his plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. And the things that represent God the most are what he hates the most. Exactly. And yeah. and children are the ultimate representation of innocence, purity, yeah. and God. Mm-hmm. And so um, why, why would he let any of them thrive? Mm-hmm. Why would he let any of them live? Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, so it's, it's definitely... And if they do live, he's just trying to pervert them and right. distort everything mm-hmm. around them. Right, so. abuse. Like, yeah. like, let's bring in abuse, right? right away and mm-hmm. cause identity an identity crisis as soon as we possibly can. Yeah. yeah. So, exactly. yeah. yeah. So with, uh, right. The, it's called power over predators. Mm-hmm. Like, what does that look like? What do you do to help? Um, yeah. Help people to prevent. It's more of a prevention yes. that you would say, instead yeah. of like taking people out of it. I mean, not that if you were given that situation that yeah. you wouldn't help someone, right. but, um, yeah. how would you, you like talk to someone or, I guess we shared, you shared a lot already, but mm-hmm. what are some things that you do? Yeah. So our mission statement is to prevent, mm-hmm. identify, rescue, and restore kids mm-hmm. from all forms of abuse and exploitation. But prevent is really where you, if you don't start there, then everything else you do afterwards yeah. is too late. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, and I'm very passionate about that because um, it is the last thing we focus on. Mm. Right. We, we've got to look at mm-hmm. prevention in in our in le- in our relationships with our kids as important as preventing car accidents by teaching them how to drive right mm-hmm. so prevention yeah. is huge we already have it built into us but there's areas where we don't invest it intentionally in yeah. in, in providing those um, spaces where our kids are protected and and so by prevention by going in teaching kids truth we do um, we have five video lessons that you know, you can either speak yourself or you can let the video speak for you, but it ranges from goal setting and uh, teaching distractions and abuse is the biggest distraction that gets a child off of their track to achieving goals. A lot Mm -hmm. of kids have never even thought about what their goals are, so they don't even understand a purpose, right? They don't even know why Mm -hmm. they're here on this planet. So we start with goal setting. And, and so like our, our materials are, 
all there just teaching its definitions and its truth, right? Mm -hmm. And so every story, every lesson, you know, teaches truth and lands in hope. And and the hope Mm. is that you're priceless and that you deserve to be loved unconditionally. Mm. And so, um, and a lot of times that's the first time kids have ever heard that. Like today I spoke in an auditorium to like 150 kids and, Mm. and, and I, you know, I ended my time with them today. You know, I was like, I I had 30 minutes to save the world today's guys. (laughs) And I don't know how much of it sank through, but if, if you don't know that you deserve to be loved without condition, then I want you to hear that you deserve to be loved without condition mm-hmm. today. Yeah. And and they're like, <laughs> and I yeah. said, because love's not a feeling. And then they. Because predators usually give a condition. Yep. It's always like, yep. I'll love you I if love you do you this. You if yeah. or so. because. And so yeah. we just, and I'm like, if that's somebody so says, I love you because, or I love <laughs> you if, they have put a condition on you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not unconditional love. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so then the kids just have all these questions afterwards because they're like, so is this, is this, you know, and they, <laughs> it, it just, and that's how you identify kids because yeah. like our very first presentation that we ever gave back in 2015 We just, we gave the definition of child trafficking and it's simple. It's when somebody uses a child or has forces a child to do something of any kind of sex act for anything of value. That's the legal definition honed all the way down to child trafficking. Mm. And this little girl, 12 years old, came up after the presentation. She's like, I think I'm a victim of child trafficking. Mm. Mm. And when we asked what was going on in her world, she said, well, my mom's boyfriend if my mom's not home he makes me have sex with him but then he throws 20 bucks on the bed Mm. and says if i tell nobody's gonna believe me i'll lose my relationship with my mom Mm. and since i take the money i'm a whore anyway so nobody's ever gonna love me Mm. she's 12 wow that's her experience you know and but for the first time she heard truth Mm -hmm. she heard a definition that's what prevention is teaching Mm -hmm. um truth then she she's like I don't have to stay stuck here. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And so she got out of that situation. So prevent, identify, rescue, the restore. Truth will set you free. <laughs> it totally it yeah. does. And the truth always outwins the lie. Mm. Amen. Mm. Right. And so it's just that the the truth is so powerful and important that that's the one thing that the enemy's trying to squash. Yeah. yeah. So we have to be really outspoken with truth. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And you probably in a way, like if if a child's being trained to be a predator, like yeah. you're also stopping that as well. Yeah. Not just yeah, exactly. the people who would be victimized, right. but like you're also stopping people. They're like, wait, my love is becoming conditional with right. these people. So I need to make sure that I have the right type of love so I don't yep. become a predator as right. well. So, yeah, that's yeah. I always say. And the flip side is now you have to love without conditions too, yeah. Yeah. right? It's not like you just both get, ways. get, get, yeah. it mm-hmm. goes both ways. Cause if you put a condition on somebody, mm-hmm. then I would, I would want that person to go, mm, sorry, mm-hmm. yeah. that's a condition. And I'm not, you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't have to put up with that. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of times, like if I see, boys and girls together holding hands or whatever and then like you look at the girl and she'll look at the boy (laughs) you know and then he's just like you know but I have had so many kids and I appreciate them so much again it's because you set the foundation for I see you I'm here for you you are loved you are matter to me and I'm not going anywhere so they feel that and they recognize that you're a safe person they can talk to and I will have boys come up to me and he's like so like I ask my girlfriend for nudes all the time does that make me a predator Mm. And I'm like, sweetheart, the fact that you're asking that question tells me that you're not a predator. Mm -hmm. I don't think you knew the truth until today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, but I do want you to think about something. Mm -hmm. What do you think her dad would do (laughs) if he knew that you were asking for those and you had those on your phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, and I said, (laughs) because he could Mm -hmm. literally charge you with a crime. Yeah. You are in possession of child pornography. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so then it's like, I'm not calling you a predator. I'm mm-hmm. just telling you. Yeah, but mm-hmm. if it goes mm-hmm. unchecked, you will become it if you yeah, don't, if you don't that deal you're with convicted. it. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, that's ruined so many kids' lives. I mean, it's so frustrating to me to hear like, oh, here, just go dabble in pornography. Yeah. So mm-hmm. again, and that going back to your conversation about women mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. those emotions and those feelings that we have and the, the, the taboo conversation of masturbation and all that, it's like, we have been told to not have sex till marriage without any conversation of what we might be physically going through. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm going to go this route 
and at least I'm not having sex, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But now we're opening up this whole other Pandora's box of exactly. there must be something wrong with me then. Yeah, yeah. and then and that's so, what the shame. And then yeah. that's what the shame does. Exactly. Yeah. That's good. So yeah. do you also have I guess healthy ways that parents could talk to their kids or what were some of your resources with yeah that? so not only do we have uh, video f- resources for kids we have a mm-hmm. whole parent video series awesome. so mm. we address all of those things mm. we we even teach like healthy response techniques like if your kid says something to you that's triggering something in you maybe yeah. because it's reflective of your past mm. how to respond yeah. you know mm-hmm. because it's like i used to be the mom that was so freaked out like if if something on com- on a commercial was inappropriate i'm like ah! And my kids are like, you're nuts, you know, just looking yeah. at me going, I can't trust you with anything because like, yeah. I think she's pretty and you're mm-hmm. freaking out, yeah. you know, so it's like, I, I learned, thank goodness, before they were too much older, that how I react to that situation is going to determine whether or not they're going to trust me, whether or not they're yeah. going to confide in me, and whether or not I'm going to make them feel shame because mm-hmm. I reacted mm-hmm. We overreacted yeah. and so it was a little more like that with our mom like mm-hmm, we were mm-hmm. more like she was she was more like that yeah so from time to time right. she try not to be right but we knew so that's i think that's why it would be easier for you dad. to go to dad and yeah. stuff you know yeah, so, yeah. Uh, oh it's and it's i mean and you know you do your best with what you've got and there yeah. and, and then i always love to say and the the best thing is that every day is a do-over sometimes mm-hmm. when you own as a parent remember when i reacted like that mm-hmm I am so sorry. I bet that made you feel like I can't, you can't trust me. Like you, whatever it is that you would say, Mm -hmm. that is sometimes more powerful than not having a reaction at all. Because now they're seeing, again, it's kind of like, because you're not being fake. I'm I'm owning my garbage, right? I'm owning it. And then I'm sorry. And it's like the, and every time I've had to own that with my kids, they're just like, it opens up a door and they're just like, Mm -hmm. it's fine. And then they start, you know, we're right back on track to where the relationship's back to where it's not disconnected anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's always about staying connected and communication and, and learning what those things are that are disconnecting us from our kids. So, and we're going to screw up. We Mm -hmm. just are, you know, just, yeah, it just happens. I know. I already think that and my daughter's only seven months old (laughs) and I'm like, I just don't feel like I'm doing everything right. But I feel like the Lord has been encouraging me. It's like, you're not going to, but that's yeah. where we need to rely on the Holy Spirit. I love the verse. Yeah. I think it's in Zechariah. It says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Because it's like only the Lord can direct us what to do. And then if He, if you feel that conviction as a parent, like humble yourself or apologize to just do that right away, mm-hmm. you know, and don't say, oh, yeah. but I don't want to, or they might think this, or maybe they'll take it this way, or they won't respect me. It's like, I've only respected my parents so much more when they humble themselves. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's the same thing. That yeah, we can and definitely. prevention, like one of the biggest ways is to stay in the word and be, yeah. have a, but I know that you had a, a good family and, mm-hmm. a, you know, mm-hmm. that, but there can be like accidents that happen. But like you said, you still knew like not to have you an abortion. Like yeah. you still right. knew these things that would help you later on or to be free from it, you know? Right. So, and then a lot of people seem to deal with, uh, like the symptoms or I think when you, when you went to that home, like it helped you, but didn't like get Get down to the root. root. So right. How do you like get down to the root for people? That's such a great question. Um, I, so I like this other, there's another thing that I like to think about all the time too. It starts with the letter S I didn't come up with this. His name's Dr. Dan Siegel, but I love Mm. this because it's a great visual. Every person needs to be seen, soothed, safe, and secure. Mm -hmm. So those four S's, like your baby girl sitting in that room, needs to know that somebody sees her, Mm -hmm. you know. And and so seen, soothed, safe, and secure, again, it's another podcast where we can dissect each word. But um, typically what we do, people misunderstand the idea of seeing is I I see something that I don't like. Like I see a behavior that needs to be fixed. Like, and that was, that was kind of how the group home that I was in was set up. That's Mm -hmm. how school is set up. Behave well. Get yeah. good grades. Mm-hmm. You're it's a little check, more critical, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it's all behavior f- focused. Yeah. Well, you got to figure out why they're behaving the way that they're behaving, exactly. yeah. right? And so that was like my parents was like, why, why does she have to be perfect? Mm-hmm. Why, why does everything have to be just right? Why does she have to beat all the boys in sports? Why does <laughs> she have to be the school yeah. president? Why does she, you know? 
those aren't questions that you would imagine yourself asking, but for those kids that are in that mm-hmm. high performance mode, those are the ones that I really want to talk to mm-hmm. because they're behaving well, mm-hmm. but why, why are they behaving like that? Yeah. You know, um, I always used to tell my kids, just screw up as much as you can before you turn into an adult because, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, it's easier before. to deal with the consequences when you're young than, <laughs> than when you get older. But, you know, mm-hmm. just giving them permission to, to blow things up and to get into accidents mm-hmm. and, you know, um, you know, make mistakes. Um, those are what we learn for, from, right? Mm-hmm. So um, the the behavior piece is is just a big... I believe that it's the distraction and where we miss and we don't have that connection when it comes to even other people in our lives. It's like we can get really discouraged when somebody's addicted to pornography and, you know, like, okay, I'm not going to spend my boundaries are up. I'm not going to hang out with that person. They're addicted to porn. It's like, why? Mm-hmm. Why are they addicted to porn? Mm-hmm. What's going on in their world? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how right? can you help them? Yep. Like, because yeah. that's an indication. Right. That it's it's wrong. a behavior. Yeah. It's an indication. Exactly. Yeah. It's definitely mm-hmm. same thing with alcohol. Same t- same thing with any kind of, of behavior that is reflective, that there's something going on inside yeah. that they can't process and they can't numb yeah. or I mean that, that they can numb with something else. Yeah. And, and it's not easy, but it's definitely, mm-hmm. you're answering those questions again. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and that's why, again, that's why kids tend to find people that are behaving the same way they are because they're connecting and they're relating yep. and they're being accepted. Mm-hmm. So it's um, it's whenever you feel like you won't be accepted, you got to look for, okay, so who's mm-hmm. going to come alongside that person mm-hmm. the minute they decide to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So which is why it's so difficult to determine why it's so hard for me so many times that churches, authority tend to protect the predator over the the victim it is i don't Mm. understand it other than it is a it's too hard to to deal with and it's easier to just throw it under the rug and just say just go get some help and we're not gonna Mm. we're not i know people got mad at my dad for basically telling the person who did that stuff is like they need to go somewhere else because i'm like dad i can't be around him when he's looking at me like that and we had people leave because they were like how could you do that like he needs help and we're like we can send them somewhere else for help but like right now my daughter cannot be around this and what's happened yep so a lot of people got mad but my dad's like i know that i have to protect my daughter especially when people respond like boys will be boys like that's a lot of oh no exactly we We didn't just dump just say get out like but it's like this place it was and i think he is in a way better place and i don't Mm -hmm. think it would have been fruitful because he said every time he looked at me it wasn't good for him Mm -hmm. but the same thing is like I had to share my story with this girl that I didn't want to, but she kept responding in really similar ways that I felt like I was going to respond if I didn't have that help. Yep. So I told her my story and I shared it and she had told me, she was like, yeah, at like a young age, or I think she was only like seven, her brother was showing her pornography and then he was doing that stuff to her and then he had raped mm. her. Mm. And so like that, I don't know what would have come out if I didn't, see that that was a similar thing and be like okay she's not just like this girl is responding more sexual or stuff it's like right she went to the which was even different because she went to the other extreme as me she went more on the like oh boy crazy i went to the i don't want to be around boys Mm -hmm. and so there's different responses for people too you would think they're all like similar but it's not no we totally process trauma differently everybody processes Mm -hmm. trauma differently Mm -hmm. and their however their brain decides to kick in and Mm -hmm. go into survivor mode your survivor mode was stay away from boys Mm -hmm. her survivor mode was go get the attention from boys right so Mm -hmm. our brains are magnificent and and so we we teach a lot about that brain mm. development and understanding so parents can really get a, an idea of yeah. where their kids are at b- developmentally in their brain maturation mm-hmm. yeah. because it's, um, man, it helps you connect. It helps you connect big time yeah. to mm. where it's like, and, and again, now you're seeing with empathy. You're not just seeing and mm. judging for the behavior. You're mm-hmm. seeing with like, okay, I, I really do see you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. and then and this is where we're going to connect because you're coming alongside them. You're on their team, right? And mm-hmm. so, um, and the thing is, is um, amen to your dad. You know, it's like, I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. it was nice of him to just yeah. set that boundary exactly. instead of, you know, maybe even making things exactly. a little bit more uncomfortable that for that individual. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, but you know, it's, and, and, and who needed to be um, rescued in that situation was you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so that's, that's the important thing. And yeah, he does need help. He mm-hmm. does. He does need to get help, but 
first the act had to be addressed yeah, and and you mean. were the person who had to receive mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. on that end of it and so yeah there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting help and setting and setting boundaries but it's also again it goes mm-hmm. back to truth the yeah. truth of what happened yeah. exactly. so yeah. and then what do we do now with the truth that we have and mm-hmm. how do we protect yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly so yeah and i yeah. think it had to be taken to that that extent because other people in that guy's life was like oh boys will be boys mm-hmm. it's just a thing they do yeah and no. so we're like no that's not good <laughs> that's mm-hmm. not cool no so yeah. that's why it was dealt with that way so, right yeah right and wouldn't you rather raise a, a boy and a, mm-hmm. into being a man who would honor and, and yeah. like exactly. are you saying that that th- this would be like how you would want to raise this young man to be mm-hmm. a husband and a father someday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, the answer is absolutely no. Yeah. Um, you can say, yeah, I understand boys are wired differently than girls and they're visually stimulated more than girls mm-hmm. are relationally stimulated. So mm-hmm. that part I would agree with, but acting out on that yeah. is where we got to draw the line. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We recognize that boys mm-hmm. are like that, which is why we need to protect them mm-hmm. from yeah. those situations. And yeah. then, when they act out in that, we got to figure out what's going on in their world. That's, yeah. that's, um, that's causing yeah. that behavior. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. I feel like we keep asking. I know, so yeah. but questions. like you said, I'm like, yeah. we have so many different podcasts yeah. we do and you are in Tucson. So, so I'm can. like, well, I was always trying to, like, I was a perfectionist trying yeah, to perform I well. Yeah, I know. That's what and I then at the end of, end of high school, I was caught up in pornography yeah. and mm-hmm. I wasn't telling anyone Yeah, because mm-hmm. I didn't want to like, stumble my brother you know i didn't want him to think oh well my big brother who's supposed to be good at everything Mm -hmm, or good at a lot like he fell into that so i could fall into it or and then i was a chaplain i was Mm -hmm. a worship leader i Mm -hmm. was at church Mm -hmm. as a pastor's kid so i was like Mm -hmm. i can't i don't want this i don't want you can get yourself out of it for my parents and i thought yeah, I thought I was disciplined enough to get myself out of it. Yeah. So it wasn't nope. until I confessed that that right. I was able to be free. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. So. Yeah. yeah, there's a, so much we yes. can ask you. There, yeah, <laughs> we'll no. have to do another podcast. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I too. I, I want to just like, just but like both of you have shared. You have the. You even today have this like. I, I don't know if I'm doing everything right. And then mm-hmm. you had the pressure of being a certain way. And it's yeah. like, I just feel like it just sparked that idea in my head. It's like, we were putting conditions on ourselves that yeah. were completely unattainable. Yeah. You know, again, it's like being a perfect mom is a condition. You're, you're a perfect mom. If mm-hmm. you're her mom, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Your mom. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. period. That's unconditional. Right. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you're, you're a son and you're, and now you're mm-hmm. a father, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but like, as you were in high school, it's like, I think the enemy has a way of, of putting, of, of, of sneaking in those lies of that. Well, you better be hmm. because there's a condition that's going to somehow define you to be more than what you believe that you yeah. are. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I'm a son, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's mm-hmm. like our, our kids, my three boys all went through that. I think it's, I think it's natural, but we even need to realize when we're putting that pressure on ourselves to yeah. be, to mm-hmm. be something more than who we are because we've just then place mm-hmm. to condition on ourselves mm-hmm. exactly so because your children see that and then ryan my husband is very good at catching me when i'm like <laughs> oh, i just feel so ugly and ryan's like well people say micaiah look like micaiah looks like you so what are you saying or he'll be like <laughs> he'll be like oh micaiah do you think that mommy's ugly and because uh, he knows she can't understand but he's like ryan she's gonna before yeah. you know it she's gonna hear these things yeah. and also knowing that these things are spiritual too we don't wrestle against flesh and blood right. but against principality mm-hmm. i think so many times especially in this dark season with like halloween and stuff i mean whether or not people celebrate Halloween here at Calvary, we don't, but cause it's just like, we hear a lot of stories in this month. Like people think they can get away with murder basically. Yeah. And they do yeah. in certain places, sacrifice children right. and do that stuff. So it's like, why would we celebrate darkness, you know, and it's all about death and fear and everything we're not supposed to be about. Yeah. And we're supposed to be exposing that. And when we're laughing and thinking this is funny, like this is real for people like you yep. went through that, you know? Right. And so, that's where just in this month seeing that instead of walking in fear like here at our church like on halloween we pray we like have a harvest festival we have where the kids can have fun and be safe and get more candy than probably the other kids trick-or-treating but it's like we pray for those children not just the children in this 
right season but all yeah. the time like yeah. what's going on mm-hmm. um like we we know that at like we want to my mother-in-law mama jill so cute because she's like i just want to save all the kids like lisa she share does. this i just want to go to the border and like yeah. Yeah. and it's like <laughs> you want to do as much as you can but all we really can do is what the lord is telling us to specifically do right. and everyone who has that conviction needs to do that like right. what the lord's telling you to do today yep. like if you see a situation and you're like your heart's pounding and you don't want to like say something or call 911 or right. do it you know yep. like you don't know yep. what you're preventing it i love the verse that my dad would always give me growing up it's proverbs 29 25 and it was the fear of man will prove to be a snare or a trap, but he who trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. So, mm-hmm. so many situations, like in that one situation, I feel like I could have run or left, but you fear man and you're like, oh, they're going to think I'm weird or this or that. And it's right. getting weird or mm-hmm. it's a family member or this, you know, but it proves to be a snare. So you need to, a lot of times run even if like i had certain situations where coaches would be like hey i need to talk to you in my office alone and my dad always taught me no nope. you can't so right. i would i would run and they would get mad at me but then i would say hey my dad said i can't and yeah. blame it on my dad yeah. but i don't know what i was all protected from but right. it's just certain situations like that like not fearing man but knowing that god will take care of you and mm-hmm. um so any closing thoughts so that you would say about anything and also where they can find your resources yeah. and stuff like that. But. Yeah. Well, I think that, um, I think that a lot of times parents feel very overwhelmed by yeah. all the bigness of all of the stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I love, I love this mindset. It's, um, yeah, there's a lot of predators out there like, okay, they're going to say at any given time, there's 500,000 mm-hmm. predators online looking mm-hmm. for kids. And you're like, yeah. Like that wow. visual, 500,000. You don't even want to go outside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, there's 85 million moms. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Which means there's 85 million dads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like we crush them, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, the, uh, uh, who we are and, and the role that we have. And it's like there we have so, it's that fear of man that is the snare. Mm-hmm. For us mm-hmm. to have the mindset that the problem is too big. Yeah. It's the problem is not mm. too big. Our mindset is too small. Yeah. And we've given mm. into fear and we've given into the lie of what can I do? Mm. Yeah. It's so simple. You start at home yeah. and you, and, and at, but by default, that's going to spread. Right. And it's yeah. going to be to where it's way bigger. It's the problem is so small, but we've just highlighted it and made it way bigger than it needs. And we have given yeah. ample room for the enemy to just stomp on our kids yeah. right, yeah. and our churches and our families. And, and so I would just say that, um, you know, no matter where anybody is at, um, there's always something that each person can do. Mm -hmm. And I firmly believe that if anybody has any abuse in their past, they literally have a wound that needs to be healed if they've never gone through the healing Mm -hmm. process. A lot of times people are like, I never would have guessed you went through all this. And I'm like, and isn't that great? (laughs) Like, would you rather me be the person that's still walking the streets because I I didn't get the healing that, you know, that, that I so longing, I I lovingly deserved to get and receive. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, it's just so it's, it's fun and it's weird too, to people who are like, they would rather see me Mm. in a bad state than completely (laughs) healed. Right. Yeah. Because they can't mm-hmm. believe that that in the mm-hmm. past. And so that's OK. Yeah. I, I just like I'm like, yeah, it's a great thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, um, the power of God. it, show, it sure does. Yeah. yeah. So start with yourself. Um, write things out with if anything's coming up, just start writing stuff down, writing that write down what you're, mm-hmm. you me- you remember, because now you're in control of your story. Your past is not in control of your story for right. anybody who gets a trigger listening to these things mm-hmm. or like, I don't want to listen to this, pay attention to that because that is your survivor brain yeah. telling you that there's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, um, really, really, really just start writing stuff down and then, mm-hmm. and then, if there's one safe person in your life, yeah. you need to be able to have somebody to confide in and start that healing process. Yeah. And um, a lot of the healing can be done through writing. And and just because mm-hmm. now, again, your trauma is not in control of you. You are in control of your trauma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where most of the healing takes place. But it is in safety of relationships mm-hmm. that are, you know, supportive and, and will yeah. go through and, and will walk there with you and will believe what you say yeah. and, and, and so, and just support you. So, um, bearing with one another. Yep. Each exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Which, 
I think the church in general, I'm not saying Mm -hmm. Calvary, I think the church in general really struggles to do that. Um, I think we also think that a lot of us are supposed to talk Mm -hmm. things through when when that's a really, really scary, difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. So writing things is where to really start. So write stuff down. Talking get- might be better for my dad. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he doesn't person. like to write. He yeah. likes to talk. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, well. Depends on the first But we do that with certain people. It's like we have a, a paper, a checklist almost before we pray with them with certain things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they, they are able, like things that they wouldn't even think of. Like right. this one pastor, he made this like list before. And it really helps people because they're like, wow, I didn't realize I forgot about this, you know, right. and not that you're trying to just bring it up because sometimes you are supposed certain things, right. if they really have been healed, that's right. okay yep. to, you know, forget about that. But that doesn't mean that you can't, there's certain things that, that haven't been dealt with, you mm-hmm. know, they haven't healed. And right. so yeah. I think those are obviously the things you're talking about. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, make sure that you're, you're getting, cause again, it goes back to that. If you don't understand your value and your worth, yeah. everything that you try to do when it comes to parenting your kids is mm-hmm. still going to actually reflect on your trauma, not your healing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to come and it's just going to keep happening. So, um, and then I was going to say something and I completely lost it in my brain. I apologize. No. But, um, yeah, I, I think too, that it's, uh, just your self-worth, re- recognizing how valuable you are as a human being, giving yourself mm. permission to, to believe and know that you get to be loved unconditionally is, is huge. Mm-hmm. It's a big, yeah. it's a big step. Um, so you're talking about writing it down was where you're at. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then also too, I was just thinking, you know, for like the, the True. closing, the closing words is, is, um, each of us has what it takes mm-hmm. to be in relationships with each other. It's mm-hmm. just that a lot of us don't know where to start and we haven't maybe seen good examples and maybe we've not experienced unconditional love from family. Yeah. So for, for me to say you deserve to be loved unconditionally, they'd be like, okay, I don't even know what that looks like really, because maybe their only experiences has been conditional love. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that's where, you know, we've got to find safe people in our lives where we can start experiencing that and understanding it and, Mm -hmm. and being able to, to, to live a free, wonderful life. Um, Yeah. yeah. Um, But my website has a ton of resources. And so, and it's there for people to just watch on their own to provide for other people great conversation starters all sorts of different tools so it's poweroverpredators.org and so that's where you can find the parent video series that's where you can find resources to get help like if you if you if if sexual abuse is a part of your story or part Mm -hmm. of your family story there's resources there if Mm -hmm. pornography is a part of your story there's resources there if you know if sexting and sextortion is if bullying you know Mm -hmm. whatever it is we've got resources there Mm -hmm. um and so I just really encouraged people to get involved in a community. Mm-hmm. And so the community that we started under Power Over Predators is called Moms Against Child Exploitation. We, mm. It's MACE. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah. A little yeah. play on words there. Um, so MACE is Moms Against Child Exploitation. And the heart behind it is for A, to raise awareness and B, to have community. So if you've got moms, mm. we've yeah. got moms who... Um, have lost children that need grief Mm -hmm. support. We've got moms whose kids have been abused and need support. We've got moms whose husbands have abused their children. So there's all sorts of different Mm -hmm. types of scenarios where people feel alone again and Mm -hmm. overwhelmed and like there's no resources. Well, that's what this whole community is about. So that's on the website as well. And um, yeah, so just starting there, starting with relationships is where I really encourage people. Yeah, it's important to have community because sin and all the all the shame everything gets worse in isolation it yep. seems like so, yeah and isolation yeah. makes you think you're crazy yeah, yeah. Yep. i exactly. must be making this up <laughs> so but you're not yeah so yeah. that's good yeah. well thank you so much i know i was like just could you share like the hope of it and i'm like honestly your testimony like what mm. someone said is yeah. just that's the hope like you yeah. are a living hope you know of just your story and mm. that's where just to encourage other people like romans 8 28 god works all things together for yep. the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose so it's like even if you feel like oh i'm too far gone or you know just no one would ever love me and now i'll never yeah. like you could have easily thought that oh, divorce with two kids and all me, your I did, yeah. trauma but <laughs> now look at you you're married yeah. 25 years and just yeah. that is something where will encourage people it's like there's hope out there there's you know? so much yeah. hope i mean your mm-hmm. baby every little yeah. munchkin is hope you know <laughs> mm-hmm. all of the, you know 
people are hope, Amen. you know, and we yep. just have yep. to look at people, you know, it's kind of yeah. like, I think we've lost mm-hmm. again. It's like when I'm sitting in a restaurant, I'm like, I am sitting in a restaurant full of people that have been created in the image of God. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Like these are people, you know, yeah. and it's like, we've just kind of let everybody go by. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing when you just look at a human being and go, good grief. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. It seems like after covid more like people yeah. have been more Just dehumanized yeah. when yeah. Like being isolated now. yes and you know doing everything through the internet you uh-huh. know so Ugh. yeah it seems like that awesome. that kind of messed things up a little more too oh know? i agree with you 100%. So we can heal from it but absolutely yeah. Yeah. the hope is we can actually talk to each Amen. other Amen. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly so, yeah. well thank you so thanks much thanks for, for having me yes we're so thank thankful you. for you and appreciate it Anyone, you can check out the website again. What's it called? Poweroverpredators.org. Okay, we'll have all that in the link below, in the description below, the links. So you guys can check that out. But thank you so much for joining us on Cabaret Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. You can also follow us on Instagram at Cabaret Conversations. And check out all the um, resources down below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless. What is it called? (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.